The funny thing about trucks is that even though the number of new models is a little limited compared to, say, an SUV or a crossover, the variety is still vast. If you're thoughtful about your bed length, your cab size, and your trim, you could be looking at $30,000 for a bare bones workhorse or $120,000 for a super luxurious living room on wheels. Not everyone makes trucks, but those who do really seem to want to make a truck for everyone. And that's how the truck that we're looking at today came to be. This is the 2023 Ram 2500, heavy duty, obviously. We've got it in its new trim, Rebel. And we've seen the Rebel treatment before on the Ram 1500. This one is here as a result of Ram's continued efforts to dial in that lineup for customer demand. In this case, demand for a truck that has the ability to go off road and also has the ability to tow more than twice its own weight. The Rebel trim looks pretty similar to the Power Wagon, the other off-roader in the lineup, with a few notable differences. First of all, we have 20-inch wheels with 33-inch tires, fewer graphics, no winch up front. Then there's this blacked out grille with a special design that's unique to the Rebel trim. And this is cool. This is an accessory, $445. It's the tubular sidestep by Mopar. It's been a really good friend to me this week. And I think it looks awesome. All 2500 Rebels get the crew cab, so the four door and the six foot four inch bed. It is possible to get the eight foot bed with the crew cab, not on this trim though. It's possible to get a power release tailgate. And there's an available in-bed power outlet for your tools or your air fryer maybe, and a pickup cargo box light. We have the black leather interior on our tester and the materials are really nice. Heated front seats are standard on the Rebel trim. Ours are also ventilated and we have dual zone climate control and an eight way power adjustable driver's seat. There's 40.9 inches of headroom and 40.9 inches of legroom in this front row. It's kind of like a big square. Now you might notice this center console is really wide and that's partly because this is such a big truck, but it's also because this could have been a bench seat for three people across. We just happen to have the two bucket seats in this particular truck. This large center console does make a nice work surface, and it's also great for storage. We've got a lot of neat little features in here, like this part moves back and forth. There's a little charging station where you can prop your phone up, and then this thing opens up. Lots of space, and there's even a dedicated spot for hanging file folders, which is so cool. When Ram says that this truck is for work, they are not excluding paperwork. There's lots of other storage in here, including at the back of this center console, and who needs a frunk when you have covered in-floor storage bins on crew cab models? Now, in total, we have 125 cubic feet of passenger volume, 60.7 cubic feet of interior cargo volume, 40.2 inches of legroom back here, and 39.8 inches of headroom. One of the main reasons that this Rebel exists is that unlike the Power Wagon, it can get the optional Cummins turbo diesel engine. Why would you want that? Basically, gas mileage and low speed torque. Diesel engines are more fuel efficient and they give you more torque lower in the rev range, which as a general rule is going to translate to better towing capability with less stress on the engine. Also, if you're doing your trucking at higher altitudes, that turbocharger is going to be essential because a naturally aspirated engine will lose some power in thinner air. That said, if you are going to be doing a lot of towing and hauling off-road, you're going to want the Rebel with the base engine, which is what we're driving today. This has the 6.4 liter Hemi V8, which makes 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. If you go for that 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel, you're gonna get a whopping 850 pound-feet of torque with 370 horsepower, but it'll cost you nearly 10 grand extra. It'll also reduce your max towing capacity from 16,870 to 14,920 pounds, and your max payload capacity from 3,140 to 1,970 pounds. Plus, since you need airflow for the turbo, you cannot get the optional winch with the diesel engine. If towing and hauling are top priorities for you, you should know that the Ram 2500 can tow up to 20,000 pounds, or 12.8 1963 Volkswagen Beetles, when properly equipped. And it can handle a payload of up to 4,010 pounds, or two and a half Herbies. 
You should also know that it has new telescopic trailer tow mirrors, new available trailer tow camera views, and a newly available trailer reverse steering control system. The EPA does not provide fuel economy ratings for this class of vehicle, but Chris Wardlaw reported that he got 19.1 miles per gallon average on mostly highway driving. I've been averaging about 12.9 with maybe a 65-35 ratio of city to highway driving. It has a 31 gallon tank and it takes regular fuel. The diesel engine comes with a six speed transmission. This one has the eight speed. And you may have heard me complain before about vehicles with too many gears. I'm sorry, but 10 is way too many for a Ford Explorer. Ram has really nailed it with this eight speed transmission. The shift points feel great and it's not overly eager to get out of first and second gear like some vehicles. So transmission, great. Acceleration, it'll get there eventually. It does weigh more than three tons, so short of using electric power, like the F-150 Lightning, it's gonna take a minute to get up to speed, and that's okay. Likewise, you really have to stomp on the brakes, but that's also appropriate for a heavy-duty vehicle. The steering is really light, to the point that it's almost unnerving. When I first got in this thing, I'm thinking, okay, this vehicle is nearly seven feet tall. Like I said, it's more than three tons. I want to have to think about where I'm gonna put it. That said, it's not twitchy, which is a good thing, and on the highway, physics kind of takes care of it. There's enough play in the steering wheel that you really have to commit if you're going to change lanes or move around, which is very helpful for something this size. This truck is four-wheel drive. That's the default for the Rebel trim. It has a part-time transfer case, which means you can run it in four high, four low, or two-wheel drive. Now, I did get some wheel hop in rear wheel drive, similar to what you might feel if you're using summer tires and it's really, really cold out. But this truck is made to carry substantial weight and that's likely not gonna happen when it's being used for its intended purpose. Likewise, having it loaded up will help with the ride. Ram says that this is the most comfortable ride in the heavy duty segment. I have not gotten to experience that because it doesn't feel great when it's not loaded down, but the suspension, again, is designed to carry a lot of weight. Speaking of ride comfort, you'll notice when you're driving, there's an eco light that's gonna come on and off on the dashboard. And when that's on, the truck is shutting off four cylinders for fuel economy purposes and it's going to make the ride rougher it might actually cause your passenger to accuse you incorrectly of driving on the rumble strip but when you're behind the wheel you don't really notice the difference the newly available 12 inch touchscreen is running uconnect 5 with wireless apple carplay and android auto it has five user profiles the ability to customize the home screen, and you can connect two phones at once. This is standard on all but the Tradesman and the big horn trims. Now there is a lot of gloss black around this infotainment system. We have just a few physical climate controls, and I personally don't love that you have to go into the touch screen to access the heated seats and steering wheels, but I do love that there are dedicated buttons for muting the sound system and turning the screen off. We've got the 17 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. A six speaker sound system is standard on the Rebel trim. It does have voice activated audio controls. And then a four speaker sound system is standard on the base Tradesman trim. Wi-Fi and wireless charging are also available on the 2500 lineup. The newly available 12 inch driver information display will show you navigation if you have that option. It also lets you keep an eye on your trailer's tire pressure and it'll show you trailer brake status, trailer light check, tow specific navigation and off-road pages. There's also a newly available digital rear view mirror that will integrate the side cameras and it'll let you see what's going on behind your trailer. Now, if you have RAM connected services, that's gonna let you use the RAM app from your phone to do things like lock or unlock or even start the vehicle, locate it, send a destination to your nav if you have that system. And if you're buying this truck for employees to drive on your behalf, you might wanna take advantage of Ram Telematics, which will let you monitor its usage. You can add the safety group to any trim of the Ram 2500. That's gonna get you automatic emergency braking, automatic high beams, adaptive cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot monitoring, which is really useful given the visibility in here. Now, if you have the side cameras, they will turn on with the turn signals. It's pretty cool for lane changing on the highway, but as someone who signals scrupulously myself, I found that incredibly annoying when I was trying to navigate anywhere. They're also super 
bright. No matter how much you turn down the screen at night, doesn't seem like you can change the brightness when that camera turns on. You can turn the entire feature off. So that's something to be aware of. You also can add most of these safety features as standalone options, making this truck even more customizable. The base price for the Rebel trim is $70,715, and ours, as tested, comes to $81,290. That's with the safety group, the towing tech group, and the Harman Kardon sound system. Now the 2500 lineup in the base tradesman trim starts just under $45,000, and you're not gonna get a sedan or an SUV with manual door locks for that amount of money, but you're buying one of these for the capability, and that really limits its competition to other heavy-duty trucks like the Ford F-250 Super Duty, the Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, and the GMC Sierra 2500 HD. The F-250 Super Duty was just redesigned for 2023 and it does start a little cheaper by a difference of about $1,000. The Sierra and the Silverado are due for redesigns in 2024, so while they're a few grand cheaper at the moment, we'll see what happens then. As with any vehicle purchase, this is a question of wants versus needs. If you need this kind of capability, the Ram 2500 is a no-brainer. If you want the extra features and benefits that come with a higher trim, then more power to you maybe even literally. But if you just want a giant truck, I would invite you to think carefully about your day-to-day -day life. Do you ever have passengers with you? They are not gonna like the ride in this thing unless you actually have it loaded down. And do you ever park in parking lots? In that case, my advice to you with this truck, look out for pull-throughs, because you're gonna need a pull-through. Hey, thanks for watching. To learn more about the pros and cons of this truck or any of its rivals, head over to cargurus.com to read our full written reviews. Please subscribe to this channel and check back soon because we'll be driving something else next week.